Hey you guys, so today's not going to be a Steven Universe video, sorry about that. I'm going to be talking about fair use and this campaign that you've probably heard about if you're a regular of the YouTube community, Where's the Fair Use? Since I've seen a lot of bigger channels talking about it, I think that uh, it was time to put my story out there too, because I'm not being treated fairly either, and it seems like the only way to get YouTube to listen to your complaints now is by making a video about it, because I'm trying to go through the official system and they are not being responsive at all. And why does it take people going public? Public to get this stuff fixed. Why isn't it being done the normal route that it says on their website? That should be done as professionally as any other business. So, uh, yeah, here goes nothing. Okay, so back in October of 2015, I finished up this really cool music video that I really liked, and uh, it was about the legend of Korra. Good content, good content right there. Um, I put a lot of thought into it because I'm a huge fan of the show, but the video was claimed by Viacom almost immediately and they took it down and gave me a copyright strike, which took away a lot of features from my account, but I'll get into that later. I'm going to make an argument here for why that video constitutes fair use and why it doesn't make any sense that they would take it down. There's four factors to fair use, okay? Number one, the purpose and character of the use, including whether such use is of a commercial nature or is for nonprofit educational purposes. So obviously this video that I made, it wasn't monetized. I didn't want to make any money off of it, I was just making it because I was a fan of the show and I wanted to share how awesome the show is with other people. The second factor of fair use is the nature of the copyrighted work. Basically, if it's a fictional work, then it's less likely to be considered fair use in conjunction with other factors. So I guess I don't qualify for that one because Legend of Korra is a fictional story. Number three is the amount and substantiality of the portion used in relation to the copyrighted work as a whole. My video is like two minutes long, okay? The music that I have behind it is actually for a trailer. When you watch a trailer, do you think to yourself, wow, after watching those two minutes of footage, I don't have to see that movie at all. That's the complete opposite of what trailers are for. They're designed to make you want to go and see the whole work. I didn't use a substantial portion of Korra at all. I just used some clips from fight scenes and that's it. So I definitely qualify for number three. And number four is the effect of the use upon the potential market for or value of the copyrighted work. So what that's talking about is if I were to publish something that would decrease the value of Korra or take money away from them, then that would be harder to justify its fair use. This right here, this is the one that gets me the most because my video had the exact opposite effect in the market. After it got taken down off of YouTube, I was pretty upset, so I posted it to Tumblr instead because I had spent such a long time on it. And it went on to be my most popular post of all time. Right now, it's sitting at 115,000 or so notes. That's reblogs and likes and all that sort of stuff. And it's been shared on other sites too. I looked through some of the tags that people have put when they're reblogging my video, and I'm gonna show them to you right here. Cause this is indicative of the effect that my video has had on the potential market for The Legend of Korra. Literally, hundreds of people have tagged my video with, Wow, I need to watch Legend of Korra now. Wow, I can't wait to watch Legend of Korra. This made me want to watch Legend of Korra. Or this made me want to re-watch Legend of Korra. So it, I'd love somebody to explain to me how exactly that's harming the market for The Legend of Korra if I'm literally sending people in troves to go and watch the show. I am making Viacom money. So that means that I get three out of four of the different points that make up their use. But Viacom did not see the same way I did. And so they took down my video. I got a copyright strike on my account, which by the way, if I get two more of those, then my account is deleted. My account is now in bad standing because of this copyright strike, which means that I can't make any money off of any of my videos if I wanted to. I can't post extra long videos. I can't make external annotations to other sites. I can't use custom thumbnails, which I use all the time before. I can't make paid content, I can't do content ID appeals, I can't make unlisted or private videos, I can't do any live streaming, and I can't do any fan funding either. All of those features have been taken from my account for six months for the supposed infringement of copyright, which is ridiculous. So to combat that, I submitted a counter notification. This is YouTube's system for disputing copyright claims and takedown notices that have been made. So I'm gonna show you now the email that I got back from YouTube. It says here, upon forwarding your counter notification to the claimant, we will allow them 10 to 14 business days from this date to respond with evidence that they have taken court action against you to prevent the reinstatement of the videos in question. If we receive no response after that time period, your videos will be restored and the associated penalties on your account will be resolved. This was February 6th. It's been 16 business days since then, and I've heard nothing from YouTube. They said that I was going to receive updates in this email thread and in my video manager, but I haven't heard anything from them since then. And I've tried tweeting at them, and I've tried emailing them, but I've gotten no response. 
This is the biggest issue that YouTube is facing right now. Their copyright system doesn't make any sense and they're not even making any effort to fix it. Nostalgia Critic actually made a video just like this talking about fair use because they got their monetization removed with no notice whatsoever. And the strike was removed from their account immediately. Um, monetization is back. Yeah, um. But when you're a smaller channel like me, YouTube can bully you into submission because there's nothing that I can do about this. And if they don't respond to my email, then what can I do? YouTube is hurting the content creators who make the stuff that's made their site so successful. If you think this is as ridiculous as I do, then I'd encourage you to tweet something, to say something. That's exactly why I made this video, because we need to make noise about this. We need to get talking about this if we want things to change. Hopefully my account will get put back in good standing soon, because I really want those features back, especially custom thumbnails, which, by the way, was not initially taken away from me. It was just randomly taken away like six weeks after all the other features were taken off. And there was no explanation given to me whatsoever. Why? Why? So please, tweet at YouTube, make a video, say something, because this is an issue that affects anyone who's watching this video. If you're a part of the YouTube community, then this affects you. Thank you guys so much for watching and supporting my channel. Hopefully I won't have to make another video like this, and I can get back to just making videos and stuff that you guys love. Thank you guys so much for the support. Uh, until next time, bye-bye.